<laughs> oh, it wasn't um, rock and roll damnation. The intro to that scared me death to dead. My dad, my dad to death one night, uh, one day. I just wasn't expecting it. Just walked in the house and that came on. On my eye, I full volume, but it wasn't full volume. It was only about t- a tenth. But that was the thing with dad's house, yeah. He built it himself. And, well, it wasn't any better than any of the local ones. Most of them built them themselves. But I said to the lad behind, um, I got the, well, I started, I actually started on the Squire Stratocaster learning, learning to play. And I got a, an SG Special. Slightly less than the price of a Stratocaster, but a Gibson. Yeah, they were Chakras. Other one made out of exotic wood and they didn't have an exotic fretboard. Otherwise, they sound the same. Well, somebody told me in the local, man in the know, obviously, the guitars that the bands take on tour are actually made out of plastic. Well, an artist wouldn't know the difference between plastic and wood because it's textured plastic. And it's a lot lighter because, obviously, if you have a truck full of guitars, it doesn't matter. If you, you have to take a certain number and you have a truck full of them. If the plastic and not wood, because wood can be quite heavy, it can be heavier than steel. Plastics are always light. But some, some plastics conduct electricity. Might be, yeah, you have to put an insulator in. But, uh, yeah, I mean, well, artists, you, you wouldn't expect them to know the difference between plastic and wood because it'll be about the same temperature. But did you never touch a piece of plastic? No, touch a piece of wood, then a piece of steel, and then a piece of alloy or aluminium to see which was warmest? Well, you didn't inquire much when you were a kid then, did you? Because I did. And I know that, um, well, I, I don't know that wood, um, no, it isn't cold. In, indoors, outside it might be. But indoors, wood will be warmer than steel and alloy or aluminium, but steel is always coldest because it's, 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 it's denser. Yeah, because uh, alloy and aluminium, the difference is alloy is a mixture of metals. Aluminium aluminium's an element um, and steel is, um, is um, iron ore that's been refined into pig iron and iron and then eventually steel, you just keep adding carbon. And for high carbon steel, you add more carbon. I forget what they're putting to make it stainless steel. They put another metal in that stops it rusting. But alloy doesn't rust. I mean, I had an alloy bag. Scratched it. Doesn't rust. And that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, um, alloy and aluminium are usually warmer than steel. And how do I know that? Well, I possibly I experimented after seeing a film on telly about an airliner that crashed. Was it in the Alps or something? Or was it um, in America? I can't remember. In 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 mountains. And it was famous because there was only one survivor and he ate parts of the fruit of a frozen corpse to, because there was nothing else to eat. He was there for weeks in freezing conditions. The only reason he really survived was because he slept outside. He told him not to sleep in the plane because he said it's um, it's metal and it, it'll be cold because even, if, even though it's cold everywhere else, it'll be colder inside the plane fuselage because the fuselage is metal. And he was the only one that survived and I think that it was basically because they'd all died because... It must have been tougher or something, just because he's... He, did he build an igloo or something like that? I don't know, he built some sort of shelter. But they wouldn't listen to him, so he, had, he, had, he was the only way to survive. And he wasn't very well liked, right? It wasn't me. No, it was a long time ago, was that? But uh, yeah, so that's why I remember it, and I thought... Also, alum, um, it, it would be al- alloy, or gyro alloy for a, an aircraft. If you slide, maybe the structural numbers are gyro alloy, like a gyro alloy sump on a rally car. No, Kevlar. Um... Well, there used to be cast iron or a steel that looked look, look like a lump of cast iron, but, um, yeah, I mean, so I touched a few things to do, which was hottest and coldest, out of inquisition, out of, no, not the Spanish inquisition, no, out of inquis- in- curiosity, <laughs> inquisitiveness, yeah, well, I was like that when I was a kid, I wanted to know where the lawnmower ran rough, it wanted new point, points and condenser, if they had a condenser, but you had to take the flywheel off, and that's unusual. Usually they're just in the distributor, but it was only single cylinder. And you, what was it, two, five, sixteens, or three, three eighths UNC bolts? I didn't know what UNC would do, what five, sixteens, and three eighths was when I was 12. Dad didn't, but uh, Dad, wasn't an, Dad didn't know about bolts. We went to the, the local farm supply place. He, they were good at everything. I just I asked for a, a with I think I asked for a gasket kit, because Dad didn't know what I was talking about. And there was a load of... Old Dan's dad said, oh, have, you, have you not thought about changing points, young man? Do you know how to change them? I said, no, I, I mean, I, I couldn't fault diagnose an engine when I was 12. It was running rough, so I lapped the valves, and I thought that's what it would be. But no, as my brothers, who had worked on cars a few, for a few weeks, said it would be either the fuel or the ignition that's making it misfire, because they weren't any mechanical noises. It would be right, yeah, it would be right. It would be, it would be the points, because it was a reconditioned second-hand lawnmower, been run for months. 
So we want the points changing because you have to change them every so often because they make and break the low tension circuit to uh, so that I, they must have a coil then. I couldn't find it. It must be inside the don't know because some some people say engines used to have magnetos, but according to what I've seen, a magneto is Australian for uh, for um, alternator. But I was told they had mag magnetos originally, and that's what created the spark because with a coil, it's a transformer basically. You have a well, they call it a coil because it's round on an engine, but um, yeah, there can be sort of square coils in transformers, and you have one with one certain number of windings, another with another different number of windings, and depending which has more or less, it either steps the voltage up and the current down um, proportionally, or um, steps the well, actually, it'd be indirectly proportional, yeah, steps the current up and the voltage down because if you step the well you transform it it's um if you move a conductor relative to a magnetic field or a magnetic field re relative to a, to a conductor it creates a magnetic field in the conductor uh sorry <laughs> i don't forget an electrical electric current in the conductor so if you vary the amount of coils the, it varies the the like this, um voltage is the pressure of the current and um Amperage is the flow of the current. It, it it's um yeah obviously it's indirectly proportional because one goes up and one goes down but it's pr proportional if you see what I mean the the the, the difference that it, from one to the other is proportional to the number of coils but obviously it changes the two one goes up and one goes down so it's indirectly proportional anyway I'm rubbing.